Okay, it is Wednesday, February 14th, Heart. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Observe it. Sean, don't die. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for my mouse so I can mute. That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Um, you're here at the DEI Working Group for Chaos. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to share my screen. And you all know this already, but I'm going to say it again anyway. This is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so please keep that in mind. And of course, you know we do not care if you have cameras on or off. You are more than welcome to keep your cameras off and just chat on the side. You can also raise your hand and speak if you would like to turn your mic on. Whatever. It's all good. And I have a chocolate question for you all today. I could never decide because like picking a favorite child, they are all amazing and wonderful. I have never, ever found a chocolate I do not like. So if, the, if anybody has, that's like that my, my like next thing one. is to find one I don't like. That don't I like don't. chocolate the better. Is that Enoch? Yeah, I was saying the darker the chocolate. The better? The better. I don't like the, there's a dark chocolate peanut butter cup from Trader Joe's that I don't like. So buy that and tell me if you like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the bottom. That's the bottom. There's one that I just don't like. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, we'll give it a try. Yes, please, everyone, send me your terrible chocolate suggestion. I, I don't like that one either, actually, Matt. I think it's because the peanut butter is sweet and the chocolate is, it just doesn't, they don't go together. Yeah, something's off on it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to eat them all to really make a, a clear determination. <laughs> That's not a problem. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I've been training, you know, for that, so. <laughs> Um, okay, let's get started. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to Mary Blessing, who was kind enough to um, facilitate meetings for me in my absence while I was traveling. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're amazing and wonderful. I really appreciate you. I know it's a little bit daunting to do that, so I really appreciate you stepping up and doing that, Mary Blessing. Uh, I don't think you're on the call today, but if you show up, we will thank you again. So, yay. Um, all right. The next thing on our list is this is an idea that came up in the community meeting yesterday um, to start trying to use uh, Google groups to manage the calendar invites. So instead of copying the uh, meeting to your personal calendar or having us send you a personal invite that everybody can see, you can join this Google group and then any changes to the meeting or cancellations, any of that will show up for you and it should show up on your calendar also, I think. If I'm if I'm wrong there, somebody correct me. But um, but yeah. So hopefully this link works. If if it doesn't, somebody give me a shout and we'll figure it out. Because apparently I screwed it up yesterday. So <laughs> links are hard. Google Groups are hard. So yeah, I appreciate that. So just let me know. Yeah. Um, and I did want to just point out that we're not going to use that as a conversation place. So um, I disabled anybody from posting except for owners. So if you're trying to post to that and you can't, that's why, because we don't need yet another place to have a conversation. Questions, comments, anything about that? So I did, I saw you did it for the community call. Like I yeah. see it in there. So you still can see the people if you click down in the invite. You, oh. See you what I'm saying? It. It's a drop down. So it shows like chaos, whatever the group is. You might be able to do that because you're um, an owner of the group. Can anybody else see it? So if you look at the chaos calendar and you see like the invites or chaos weekly community, Wait, let me just go. I have a drop down arrow that allows me to see everybody. Um, go to today. So the community, I thought I fixed this, but it couldn't be wrong. Do the arrow that I'm logged in as chaos though. Okay. So if I'm just logged well, in. As, I don't know. No, even if I'm logged in as me and I add the calendar. Yeah. Okay. So I think, I mean, it's I also think it's true. because I think it's because you're um, an admin of that group because I'm not oh. an admin, correct, Elizabeth? You are of of this one. So oop, what happened? I am not an admin, and I do not see anything except the chaos. Okay. Uh, working group list. I do not okay. see the whole list of who those people are. Okay. Yeah, and I actually see what I see is that. Um, so I'd like to be an owner so I could see who the people are in my case. Yeah, you you should be Sean and Matt and Don. You yeah. all are 
owners of the weekly thing. All right, I might. Because when I when I look at the invite on my calendar, it says that the guest list has been hidden at the organizer's request. Okay. Um, and I see the same thing when I look at the directly at the chaos calendar. Okay. Well, then that then that's good. That solves that issue. Okay. Who needs technology? I, I tell you what, they got to make stuff so hard. Jeez, so then the, the idea would be is that if somebody wants to have this directly added, then we would just point them to the group or yes. sign them up on the group as Correct. opposed to, to the uh, calendar invite. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, this link works. Did, did we decide that this works? Did somebody try and join that? <laughs> Click it. <laughs> I'm a little afraid. Well, I'm logged in, so I don't know what I'll see. I know. I I never. It's like class. I never click links in front of a class. Right? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if this link does work, we'll add it to the top of this list and say, you know, to be to put this on your calendar or something. Uh, that's a good idea. Oh, so, yeah. I don't see. I don't see the people even logged in as the chaos community on Gmail. I don't see the people, so I don't know what I'm seeing. Okay. <laughs> I did not add you all as owners to this one. The only one you're added as an owner to is the community one. So there, I figured the rest of them, because otherwise, because you, you're already subscribed to the chaos calendars, all of you are. So you're going to get, I don't know, multiple stuff. Oh, it works. Thank you, Peculiar. Yay. OK, so we'll copy this. But shouldn't I see, I mean, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time at Google, but when I'm logged in as the chaos community, I would think I would see the members of the group, but maybe not. Yeah, you should see it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's just assume I'm having some Google or web issues, and uh, this is better than what we had, and we'll go from there. I don't have the nice little dots. Although I'm not, I'm right. not sure. Um, so peculiar. You said that worked. When you did, you just click on this and join it. Uh, the link works, but did it send you a calendar invite for the DEI working group? Oh, I, it took me to the the page, and when I I have to join before it can do send me uh, the can send me any mail to my mail. Yeah, because so I have got... it open the page, then I have to click join join group if I can receive a mail. Yeah, I joined the group, but I don't, um, I'm not getting the email with the invite. Mm. Oh. Okay. Because I think if you join the group after the invite is sent out, it doesn't know to send you an invite. I see. Okay. Uh, I, no, I'm pretty it, sure. Oh, go ahead, Peculiar. It didn't, it didn't send me an invite again. What it did was to uh, send me the link to the meeting, the days, the day of the meeting, the time for the meeting, just like the way you get it on your calendar when that is set, when you are added to a calendar. Mm -hmm. So it sent those information to me for the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This is saying, I'm not sure it's working as designed yet because I'm pretty sure that the automation that we had in Kubernetes did something special to make that happen. Okay. Okay, could I, could I share how that shows in my mail? Yeah, if you if you yeah, feel that comfortable. Would be super doing that. Do you want to share your screen? I don't know if you want to do that. That seems personal. I don't know. Oh, sure. Post okay. a screenshot, whatever. Yeah, a screenshot would be perfect. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on. Um, I'll troubleshoot this a little more before I start blasting it out to everyone to do this thing. Um, thank you, Don, for uh, letting me know that there might be some automation that I am missing. So, well, I'll figure it out. Um, okay, let's go on to badging updates. Can I click this? Click. The anticipation. Okay, here we go. Oh, nice. All right. Does someone who put this on here want to talk about it? 
We might need to okay. zoom into a page at a time to see it clearly. I was I was speaking, not knowing I'm muted. Gosh. How do I just zoom? Are all three of those pages the same? Oh, I see empty, selected, filled. Oh, I did not want to do that. <clears throat> oh my god. Two hundred percent. Sorry, everyone. That's two hundred percent. How do I? <laughs> Could you just close yeah. that and maybe um, you can open it again? Okay, close and open again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like such a boomer when I can't. There's a, there's a, there's a Figma app. I don't know if you've downloaded it, but it seems to behave better in the app for what it's worth. Okay, now I can just zoom in here. Um, zoom to one hundred percent. Hey, there, there you go. go. Boom! I've beaten technology today. Well, how do I get out? Continue with Google. I don't want. I don't yeah. Want so um. Lamy um, made these beautiful designs for us. Um, we're trying to integrate the, the self-hosted um, application into the website. And she tried to change that Google form that we have into something that looks like the designs on the website. So this is not like uh, something we've uh, yet implemented, but we're looking at implementing. So the fields she put there are related to the fields in the in the Google budging form. Uh, on the budging form. And we're just going now to design this and place it uh, somewhere where there is like apply for a budge, where there is login for GitHub and self-hosted projects somewhere. So that when you click, this is what comes up. And then when you submit, we can have that automated. Um, I just put it here, one, so that um, we can, um, look through it and see if it's um, worth it or if there is anything to change. And also to give a shout out to Lamy for the great work. She delivered this in a short period of time. I'm not sure I know the difference between these first two. Uh, it's the, their stages. If there's like a little text above the page that says one's empty and one's something else and then one's filled out at the very end. Yeah, okay. yeah, there is no difference apart from I think um I think uh yeah it's just I forget just what the difference there were two labels. So if you can yeah, see the second um, one is um selected Oh let when, me know here. Uh. Um when a field is selected. So only project name shows I got when you. It's selected. Right here. Okay, I got you. Yeah. So the difference is um, the interactions. So the, the, the pages show you the interactions. Um, so that's it. That's the first one. I'm not sure whether there are any comments on that. It's beautiful. That's my only comment. So um, someone one. has um, already jumped into making the, the designs and putting them in the website. Now this one is... Um, or the event budging application. Um, if you can remember how you zoomed in, you can zoom in too. Um, sorry, so, I don't um, know if it works when you're not logged in, but you can't pinch or to zoom in. Is, I hope, I'm, I'm thinking she's using the mouse. Yeah, I just zoom out. Okay, I'll just use my keyboard. So, okay. so the mouse. okay, yeah. So uh, this one is for um, the event budging process that is on budging.chaos.community. We're thinking of um, bringing this when someone goes to apply for the budge and they're under the event budging. Um, instead of being redirected back to budging, uh, instead of being redirected back to chaos.community, it just pops up these forms that you see here so that all the work happens inside the budging.case.community. So that's why um, we were like having an idea of coming up with this design so that someone doesn't have to move out of budging.case.community to be redirected somewhere. So um, let me come up with these beautiful designs so that we can have this also integrated into the website. So those are the two designs that we are currently working on. Um, so then it would just be, I like this a lot, the next 
and tells them how many steps there are. So it would just go from like every uh, metr metric. Is that, I guess, by page? Uh, so this is code of conduct. So. Lummy, is that so? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Perfect. I love it. Yay. And then we're going to be adding a few as well. So just a heads up. We have three to add. I think I think I think the front end the front end team um, can make it easy, yeah. So that when there is a new metric to add in, you could just copy paste and add okay. into the pages. Yeah, this is fantastic. Thank you so much, Lamy. Yeah, Matt always has comments. I'm not sure why he's quiet. Is he overwhelmed? Well, I was just waiting for the. I do <laughs> so. So this is phenomenal. So thank you, Lamy, for all Lamy. your work on this. Um, I guess I have my two questions are for the self-hosted Enoch, like how much mm -hmm. is that from a backend perspective to, yeah, tie so the, in, you know, to the whole, like getting it into the list process. So that's what I was actually going to talk about next. Um, because since, since the week started, I think on Monday, I was trying to come up with an endpoint for the back end because um, someone is already has already taken up this ticket, like working on the implementing the UI. And um, one of the question I have is um, I'm trying to, because the self-hosted projects are from both GitLab and GitHub. So we're dealing with two APIs here. And what I don't understand is um do we have so first projects that are having their own um urls that are not like gitlab.com or github.com something like I think that it's, i think it's possible yeah that they would just post their dei.md file on hey sean you're typing again really loud damn it sorry um okay. so just in terms of i think it's possible that they would have their dei.md file just on a website mm -hmm. could be reasonable on a website, you mean like um, somewhere like chaos.community? Yeah, and that would be the only place where it would be located. I think that's a possibility. Yeah, because while I was making the implementation, one of my two questions I had, one, um, if, if it's self-hosted, that means they could have a, um, a unique URL that is, that is hosting their GitLab instance or GitHub instance. Probably Daniel could help us um make that um more clear and then two if you're saying they can have their dei.md file hosted anywhere else um one problem i was having was in in gitlab and github if the projects are not self-hosted it's easy to pull the markdown content because the api provides for um, an endpoint where you can just pick out the content in the md file and then you can manipulate it anyhow you want because mostly that's what we are we are actually um, going through the content. So what happens when something is um, probably uh, an MD file is hosted somewhere and maybe I'm not quite sure because I was looking at the testing that I could do to make sure I prove that. But if an MD file is located somewhere and we're having issues with picking out the content of the MD file, um, how do we cater for that? I'm not sure whether my question is clear. It is. Um, is there a, I just, maybe, is, go ahead, Sean. Is that why we're asking for an email though, Enoch? Could we just uh, notify them in the email that we can not find it? So um, it's easy to check that the URL is working, but um, picking out the content on the MD file, if it's like a self-hosted project, um i may need I, I i while i was creating the api endpoint um i realized there is need to create like a generic way so that i cater for all instances one the endpoint should be able to like detect where the url is uh in a way that um if it's not like um something like um chaos.community dot uh, sorry um like if it's not like uh of our, a URL like gitlab.com or github.com and it's something like um, cares.org but it's a GitLab instance or it's something like um, budging.community and it's also a GitLab instance. I was trying to think of 
a generic way that my endpoint can capture that and fix it within um, the GitLab API and then use the GitLab API to pick the MD content. Um, it's my thoughts. Not I th so I, th th I th think what you're saying, Enoch, is that there's some logic we have built into the, the OAuth with GitLab and GitHub that lets you do some things that are not available on the self-hosted. And you're trying to figure out how to do those same things for self-hosted. Yep, yep, yep. I think you're 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 bringing up my thoughts in the right way. And what I'm not actually thinking that it's it's right is, does the GitLab API also um, work for the self-hosted projects the same way it will work for projects that are not self-hosted? So, I believe self-hosted would. We would require self-hosted to not have a GitLab or GitHub URL. If it is a GitLab or GitHub URL, it is not self-hosted. Self-hosted is the project that's on a professor server or at a not on a Git Forge of the two that we're using. So I would say if somebody would try to give us a link to a, a Git Forge like GitLab or GitHub on the self-hosted, we would refer them to the page we would suggest that they log in because this is not a self-hosted project. Okay, I think I... Does, does that make sense? So if you're on self-hosted, I think mm -hmm. if I'm getting this right, by definition, we are not on GitLab or GitHub, or am I missing your point? We're not on GitLab or GitHub? Well, if it's self-hosted, that's right. Matt, is that what you think too? Yes. So okay. they're using some internal deployment perhaps of GitLab or GitHub, but it's one that we don't have access to. Like we just, we can't connect to it in any way. Right. So it would still have that URL though. But it's, it's we just can't access it. Like, right. Because it's internal. It'd be like if I, if I was hosting an open source project here at the university and all of the, the software development work was occurring just on university servers, that nobody had mm -hmm. public access to. And I, but I still wanted to say, even as part of the team here at the university, we care about DEI and we want to put together a DEI.md file. I, I couldn't put it on my self hosted servers because nobody could check them. So I'd have to put it on all some right. uh -huh. public right. web page. So, so Matt, Matt, if you were to like um, create a DEI.md file on your own server, where, like for your own self hosted project, where would you put it? I just put it on a website of my it, project page. And, and it would be in the root. Yeah, like an MD file, won't it? Yeah, I just, I I just put it on a, like, whatever, my Bridge Lab open source project. And it'd just be a web page posted at the we university. Could, I think we can expect that, that DEI.MD files at the root of the project. I think that's your question, you know. We don't have to go looking for it. He was, I guess Matt's, he was saying where yeah. would I put it? If it was self-hosted, yeah. nobody could see it. And I wanted people to see it, mm -hmm. I would put it out on a web page. That's what that yeah. would be the most logical place to put it. Will, I see that, will, 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 will that still maintain the file format of Markdown? Yeah. Well, or yeah. Um I guess that's a good question. Ruth has a comment. Okay. Yeah, so I think and maybe maybe I'm getting what self-hosted projects wrongly, what it means, right? So like, for example, I think I've seen public instances of like GitLab that is also publicly available, right? Like, I don't know, maybe I could show an example of Eclipse. I don't know if this is something that is a self-hosted project. Let me give, uh, yeah. is this a self-hosted project? Hey, so I, I think my understanding is that the could you the project... click on that link, Elizabeth? From yeah, like screen. my understanding is that it's uh it's it's publicly available, um, because then if it's not publicly available, is it's open source? Right. So like how do if the di.md file is not in the also like I think an interesting question. 
Elizabeth, could you click on that link? It's in the chat. Yeah, I did. I don't I don't know why. It oh. was... Yeah, I think Enoch sent another one, like Debian as well. Okay, let's try this one. Okay. It's trying to use Safari. I don't... That's weird. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> what? Okay, let's just try this. Thanks. Yeah, I think the one... I think what Enoch sent is even more, more like, more like what I mean. Like this is a, so that's like, self-hosted. Yeah. So, the but that's not. Is that a? So they're saying that's their project. The the Debian project is self-hosted, and there's all these repos that are part of it. And there yeah. isn't an equivalent oh, org level I like dot. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Daniel could help explain. <laughs> he loves it. I th uh, so I think I'm, I'm, if, I've never go seen, ahead, Daniel. Uh, I, was, I think the only issue here would be if you're talking about a self-hosted project where we couldn't have a publicly available DIMD file. But then at that point, I think as we're saying in chat, if it's not publicly available, are we still going to be badging them? It doesn't. It, at least it doesn't make sense to me why their DEI file would not be publicly available or are they not accepting community members? Are they not accepting open source contributions? So I would think that has to be publicly available, at least as I've understood it so far. Could, could someone send me a link for a self-posted? Um, I've never seen a self okay. A self one, one thing I would, sorry, okay, go ahead. Uh, so, Sean, Sean, go on. Um, I was just gonna say that in, in, this, in this case, I, I don't think that we can like we so a feature that we can we can badge like a project if they give us a project level dei.md file right in this case that we can't see there's nothing project level there isn't an equivalent dot gitlab or dot github repository that you can put shared assets into so for something that's self-hosted like this I think we can only accommodate badging the individual repositories I don't think we can accommodate badging this whole organization because they don't give us a way to, this particular platform does not give us a way to do that. They'd have to put a DEI.md in each repo. Daniel, am I, Daniel, tell me if I'm wildly misthinking that. No, but I think it's just that um, we don't have to require them to have it in each uh, in each repo, and we would just want to know which project we're gonna it's gonna be in. The same way we, that we did at GitLab, we have the GitLab.org as the group level, and then GitLab the project level, and then within the GitLab project, we have the DEIMD file representative of the organization. Does that make sense? One hundred percent. Yeah, I thought I might be a bit off there. So, you know, for your purposes, then if what Daniel's saying is they just have to give us a link to the repo that the DEI.md is in, and it looks like we might need another field that indicates this. We're badgering this project and this project link that we see now, and then another link for where the DEI.md file is. I don't remember if that's there already or not. Yeah, I'm thinking we are going to create another field for um, something like the um, self-hosted project URL and also, okay, and also the link to the di.md file. I'm just thinking, I'm, okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking um, the link to the repository should be enough because if, 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 if they are public, that means we can use the GitLab API on their URL to retrieve a DI.MD file from their public repository if, if it's really public. Um, just thinking the API accommodates for, for that. If you give us a URL to your to your public repository, even if it's self-hosted, we can use the GitLab API to pick out any content that we want. Um, I think Matt's hands yeah. up. Yeah, Mar Margie could go on. I think I also need to collect my thought. Yeah, my thought. I, just, I wanted to just kind of raise a point that uh, Ruth had brought up and it was kind of in passing and I don't know if it was point that you wanted to talk about more Ruth, but it was if a project is self-hosted, 
and not publicly accepting contributions, then irrespective of where they put their DEI.md file, is this an open source project? So like if I'm running something at my university and I, I'm running it on a local platform, that's fine. But if I'm not accepting contributions, I, I can create any DEI.md file I want according to the format. But if it's not an open source project, then so maybe for self-hosted, we do need to clarify that people can make contributions to this project. Yeah, I mean that's it's that's like that's open source by license, I suppose. It's Sean to your point. Yeah, I did a I did a study like 15 years ago or 14 years ago that we looked at there's project there are patterns of projects that just they're public and they take PRs and they close them without merging them. Like, I don't know if we want to get in the business well, of trying to judge that part. But like, it if just we can't even, be... I'm, my point is, is if we can't even see the repositories. Right. That, yeah, that's the line. That's the line. <laughs> I like, think. If you can't see it, then it's not open source. Then, yeah. Uh, that was like exactly my thought was like, if, if we can, like, for example, the, the ones that apply via GitLab and GitHub, right, we see that they have a repository, they submit like a DI.md file, and we see that a, rep a public um, repository exists. But like for the self-hosted project, um, in the cases where they submit a, 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 a DI.md file that is on their website, right, like, how do we know, like, it's publicly available? So I, I think somebody mentioned adding, like, a, if a a particular question that asks for their project link as well so yeah i think so too okay um uh, i just pasted the link in the chat i'm not sure if someone can open it for me and see what they're saying because it's taking long to load on my end um for me but okay looks like it's uh, um but that's like another self-hosted um instance for the University of Missouri, but it's for GitLab. Um, I, I I think I think um uh, I will have to connect with um Sean and and Daniel on either the same or two separate instances to just clear my thoughts about some things when I get them in the right order because um I am thinking um this endpoint is going to be a lot of generic and so huge because it has to incorporate in a lot of um, um, a lot of um, generic information so that it caters for all <clears throat> for all instances of self-hosted projects and um, where they may be and what API actually serves them better. But once I get my thoughts in order, I will connect with any of the two or both of them. Yeah, I think I think Daniel and I probably both understand the problem that yeah. you're facing. Enoch can can help you articulate. Yeah. We we could maybe start a discussion in Slack about yeah. this. Sure. And sure. Uh, of course, we live in the same city now, so you and I can meet up and need to today or tomorrow anyway. So we can so, cover this then. Yeah, and since 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 like we have a lot of other things to talk about on the agenda. Um. I, I just want to go through the two of them so quickly. Um, there is a documentation we're making for contribution um, for, for, for mostly um, a badging. And um, I've also seen that there is another con community contributions.md. I'm not sure how do those two, um, how, what's the difference between those two, the community contributions.md and also the, the one for that is repository specific. I think I can... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The I think you know that's for non-code contributions, like people facilitating meetings and like just adding like their names. There's that the file you're talking about. That's different. Like the if for documentation, it's um documentation related. Is it is it what you're asking of? No, um, that that yeah, I'm I'm just trying. To, I was just trying to find out if there is a contributions that MD for the community. Like, um, is that catering for all the basic um the basic workflow of contributions for all repositories, or does that have different content? And every other repository should have their own contributions that MD file that is specific to the repository, or there is one generic one for the community. 
Okay, I think it is authentic that. Yeah, we have one right now um, mm -hmm. with the idea that it will probably get unwieldy at some point, and then we can decide if we want to do one per repo or per project or how we want to do it. Um, but mm -hmm. for now, there is just one, and it's in the chaos community repo. And, it, and to Ruth's point, it, it should just capture anything, any contribution that is not captured already in a PR. So if it's in a PR somewhere, then it's already taken care of. These are for specifically contributions, like Ruth mentioned, like facilitating meetings, running events, things that don't show up. All right, in a PR. All right, all right, all right. I get that. And then I'm, um, I'm thinking of archiving the event budging repo since we moved all the, since we moved all the logic into one repository. I'm not sure whether you people are fine with it. If you are, I'll do that. Um, if there is a question about that, probably we can raise it here. Can you say the event budget report? Is it so um better issue get reviewed from? Um yes. You, you were breaking in between there. I'm not sure whether I got the question, That's, but Elizabeth answered it. The event badging repo is where the issues get opened no 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 there is um event diversity and inclusion that's one repository but this event badging um repo was um the repository having the logic for the badging bot but we moved all that into um the badging um api repository so okay. it's like now redundant and we would want to close it so that we can have one repository for that got you yeah then that sounds great yeah I'm good to me too. All right. Okay, I'm done with the budging. <laughs> just finished with all the budging. <laughs> Wait, there's one more thing. It's at the yeah. end. I just wanted I added to... it there. Oh, who added this? Okay. Me. Sorry. It was from last week. So I don't know if Matt um and me blessing if you brought together those comments. I know you were going to do uh, something like that. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean to, but no, I didn't do it. <laughs> okay, so this is something that maybe we should review for next week. Can we take yeah. a look? Yeah. And then everybody yeah. can. Yeah, sure. Awesome. <laughs> we do have other stuff. I, I did want to bring this next one up in this meeting. Yeah. Um, sure. If that's okay. Because we only have nine minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, the folks at the Linux Foundation event team reached out to me and they are, after much, much conversation and thought and discussion with their privacy folks, um, they are really hesitant and have decided to no longer collect demographic information at registration because of the, um, the data collection risk and the risk to privacy. So they were very concerned about how that would adversely affect their ability to get a badge. Um, so uh, they are still going to try to collect the information anonymously, um, but and so I, t I told them that that would be enough for a check if they're just trying in some way to collect that information, then I think that's enough for the check on the on the application, but it, it made me think maybe we should change our approach to how we ask these questions, given that some people do have this concern and that's why they don't collect the demographic information. Not that they don't care, but they don't have a good process in place for storage and it's just too risky for them, um, in their opinion, to, to collect that information. Go ahead, Sean. Uh, I agree with that. I, and I'm not gonna try to persuade the, what we do with research, like when Anita Sarma and I work with uh, the different surveys, Basically, if there's a if there's less than five people on any survey that that have fall into a category that we treat that as PII and those categories have to be merged into other categories. Um, so I, I think maybe the Linux Foundation is concerned about because, of course, somebody will have to hold the information that lets you put them or, or notice that there's only three in a group uh, and may, perhaps they are concerned about holding that data themselves. Uh, and that's reasonable. And so anonymous surveys is probably the best we can do if, if they are concerned about holding the data. It also makes me wonder if we should be asking that question. If you are collecting demographic data, how do you store it? And do you have a process in place for keeping that secure? I don't know. What do you think? We could. And that's that's one question of six that we have right now. Is that right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And so I told them, it, well, there's there's three checks that kind of go with it. It's like, do are you asking? Are you giving people the option to opt out? Are you allowing them to put in their own information in the fields and yeah. you know have a free flow? So there are a few questions around that. So if they don't have any of those checks, it could potentially bump them down to a silver badge, yeah, yeah. Um, which, you know, is still fine. It's still fine. Oh, but, but like, I hate they, to, I mean, they're actually being thoughtful on this. Exactly, issue. right? Like, right. I don't want to penalize them for putting more, <laughs> you know, more more worried about this and more concerned about it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's to us to think about, I mean, it's, it's not unfair for us to rethink what the metrics are that go into the badge anyway. And I don't think it's a bad thing to maybe reconsider demographics in light of this conversation as part of the badge. I, I agree. We, Go we ahead. Could also, yeah, we could also simply uh, make the way that we ask it more general so that there are many potential OK answers. Mm -hmm. Have you considered demographic yeah. <laughs> just leave yeah, yeah like how and to what extent have you considered it and how how will you be able to how what will you what steps will you take to know if you have demographic diversity and i'm just thinking of like the next thing that happens that makes this more complicated in the future by by making it more general I think it might be more maintainable. Should we ask about whether they know if they have demographic diversity or how they're what steps they're taking to increase their demographic diversity? I think it's more than knowing. I think it's what what are what are they actually doing? Agree. Yeah, we just ask if they have a way to collect that information. Like are they paying attention to it essentially? Not asking about what changes they're making or um, what, like if they have it, what levels. We don't ask any of that. It's just how are you thinking about this in a way of like to collect this information. Maybe to Thanks. Don's point, it kind of sets it up a little bit more like the DEI.md file. Like, how are you as an event team or for this event um, thinking about ways to improve? demographic diversity at your event. <laughs> like the answer can be anything. Yeah. And so, and there can be a variety of ways to do that. And it's even, so I kind of like that. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that event location inclusivity metric where we're mm -hmm. not asking them to not hold a, a conference in a certain location, but it's just, how are you thinking about it? How are you yeah. communicating that to your attendees? How, what information are you giving so that they can make the decision whether or not to come? Could we put this on the metrics work group meeting? Yeah. This tomorrow. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. I told I told um, Angela that I would bring it up in this meeting. So. Um, yeah. yeah, and I just I mean I don't think they'll ever watch this recording, but I mean the LF events team has just been amazing and helped us learn so much during this process, percent. and I really want to listen to what they have to say and think about it. Yeah. And, and I love probably. That. Oh, go ahead, Sean. I just say they're probably not the only organization that doesn't want to hold PII. Yeah, we have had have gotten that feedback before, especially with European events and like GDPR concerns. Um, but I, I did appreciate Angela's like she said, we take this badge very seriously and we don't want to lose that. So that made me feel better that <laughs> that they care about it so much that they were you know worried and reached out to us so yeah they're they're awesome thanks everybody we'll we'll move this then to the metrics development work group um three minutes sorry uh for this update i'm not sure who put that on hi it was me go ahead brian okay so for the kiosk africa just a little update on the disability inclusion and mainstreaming team that we started working last week so we were supposed to host a watch party specifically for persons with disabilities but we are shifting our focus to only host an outreach program that will be targeting only persons with disabilities and not other groups so we started we started working on the agenda we'll be having updates on the location this week from victoria i think they're in this meeting and we will be submitting everything to Ruth, who is the Chaos Africa lead after the next meeting, which will happen next week on Monday. 
So I think since you have three minutes, I wouldn't want to take much time. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Um, we can absolutely bring this up again next week um, because I, I know that like this is all brand new news to me. So I would really love like more context around how it came about and what the goals are for it. Um, so would you be willing to give us kind of like a maybe this happened already here? Sorry if it did. I missed it. Um, just a presentation kind of on it and give us a whole lot of more information. Would that be OK next week? Yeah, yeah, sure. That would be okay. I actually did it last week okay. with Mary, Mary Blessing, but I'll, I'll, I'm okay with repeating it. No worries. <laughs> okay, never. You know what? I can absolutely go back and watch the recordings, which I have not done yet. So. <laughs> I will do that for sure. Thank you. Many folks were not there, so it will just be good for me to repeat it. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, and then in one more minute, this is announcement from Matt. Yeah, so our our Chaos Project DEI badging panel was accepted for OSSNA, and it has uh, Enoch and myself and Elizabeth and then Sarah from All In and GitHub uh, and Emilio from GitLab on the panel. So I'm just really excited to have just great representation to talk about this project. I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. Way to go. Yay, team. Woohoo. And then this is not an urgent thing. We can talk about it next week. So I'll just move that to next week. Oops. Awesome. Woo, week. Okay, there we go. All right. Thanks, everybody. It was great to see all your faces today and hear your wonderful voices. So um, have a great week, and we'll see you here next time. Happy Valentine's Day. See you later. <laughs>